everybody. Happy Saturday evening live tutorial stream. I hope everyone is doing well out there wherever you are today. Sorry, I'm getting a bit of a late start because I was sort of prepared for this tutorial and then I lost my template. Like, I don't know if my kimono like floofed it somewhere or what, but I went to get on and I was like, oh, my template's not here. Well, that's unfortunate. So welcome to uh, Gemstone Wood Inlay. So this is one that I'm actually pretty excited about. Um, this person I didn't move on my... Oh, what did I do? I just did a thing. Oh, goodness, really? There, that's the one I was looking for. So yeah, hi Lori. How, hi Aso. Hi all of my Saturday peeps. It's nice to see you all out there. So gemstone wood inlay. This is um, a random idea I had um, that I started playing around with and I was really happy with how it turned out. So it, it's literally a block of wood that has that I put stones in. Also it's literally not really in focus so I should fix that. Um, and I really want to um, play more with this and uh, maybe do some larger sizes, different shapes. Of course, um, you know, this is inspiring me to want to get more tools because I really want to have, you know, more setting burrs and a wider range of things that I can use. So, of course, wait, no, I saw you. You were in focus for a second there. Come back. It's such a small... There we go. Okay. So let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. So your main tool for this tutorial are going to be, or tools, are going to be um, your rotary tool and a variety of drill bits. So you're going to need just a small drill bit. I'm using my 1 16th. That's basically just going to be to drill pilot holes for everything. You're going to need a big ass drill bit. That's going to be to drill um, the hole where your cord is going to go. That's going to be the last thing we do. And then you're going to need these. These are called setting burrs. So these are not woodworking tools. These are these are jewelry tools. These are metalworking and fabrication tools. Um, and what they're designed to do is, um, and we've used these on tutorials before. You can see they look kind of like a cut stone. They're, they're literally designed to burr out a little seat or a little setting for your stone. So this works really well in the wood because it, if we were to just take our drills and just drill down into the wood with a cylindrical drill bit, um, it would be very difficult to set our stone without having it fall out the bottom. So with the setting burrs, we can actually make a little setting for our stone and um, pretty easily. So like I said, I lost my template right before stream. So here I go, cutting out my new template. I'm gonna do a pretty simple design this evening. I'm not gonna do something as complicated as that eye that I did on my prototype. I'm just gonna do a concentric circle design. So I'm gonna start by taking my, um, I just printed off a concentric circles template from the internet. It's seriously, it's a stock photo. Like it's got little watermarks on it. And I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna put my stones. So obviously I'm gonna put one, well not obviously, but I am gonna put one in the center and that's gonna be my biggest one. So you wanna match the size of your setting burr to the size of your stone. So this is a four millimeter setting burr. I haven't quite decided what stones I, that's the other thing that delayed me getting on the air is I was like, I had made choices and then I changed my mind and then I changed my mind again and then I changed my mind back. You know how that goes. I just don't know if I like those. What I really want to use in the center is this. This is a, a um, sapphire, a black sapphire with the gold sheen. But I don't have a setting burr that's quite big enough for it. I have a 4.5 millimeter setting burr and this is a five millimeter stone. So I can't use that. And so I've just been like picking through all of my stones. You know what? Just take the easy way out, Allison. I'm just gonna use turquoise like I did on my prototype and then all the way around in my concentric circles I'm gonna use these little black cubic zirconia stones and um, which I've had for about a million years and I haven't found anything to do with yet um, so I'm gonna just start marking on my template 
kind of using my radials where I'm going to put my three millimeter stones. And I think I can probably put one on each of the radials, which makes life really very easy for me because I don't have to fudge my spacing at all. So things that I learned, all right, so I'm, oh dearie me, I'm so sorry. All right, so I'm just going to continue this marking process um, and I'm going to skip I may or may not skip a, a loop just for time's sake. But, okay, while I'm doing this, things I learned while I was making my prototype. Okay, um, opaque stones are great in this because they really contrast the wood. Transparent stones on this darker wood that I have just die. They just completely croak and die. Yes, so um, opaque stones are better than sorry, I'm just making sure that this actually will work. I don't know if that will work. Okay, we're gonna think on that for a minute and we're gonna continue drawing dots. So so yeah, so transparent stones will die. They won't show up. I haven't tried this with lighter colored wood yet, so it's possible. On a lighter colored wood, they, they would show up, but on this darker wood, no bueno. And then um, the other thing is if you are going to be wanting something that is sparkly, don't use a gemstone, use a rhinestone. Okay, because here's the thing about, about gemstones is um, when you glue them into the wood, again, they completely die. So if you want sparkle, you've got to use a gemstone, not a gemstone, sorry, a rhinestone that has foil on the back. See what I really wish I had was some smaller black CZs, but I don't. So, first of all, I'm not going to use the lint, drink the linseed oil. Alright, do I want to... Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Alright, so here's my marked up template, and I have... I'm having thoughts about this inner circle here, I think these are too close together. I just, I think that I'm going to run into each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do every other one. And I'm just going to hope I remember that when I'm drilling my pilot holes. So I'm going to take my block of wood and I'm going to put my template onto my block of wood using just a little bit of rubber cement. The rubber cement will, for the most part, not leave a whole lot of gook on your wood and um, it's pretty easy if it does to just sand it off, but mostly it'll just peel off pretty cleanly. Um, and this is just a little block of hardwood. I did have these um, custom cut for me when I had the idea for this project, but if you've got any kind of scrap wood lying around, you should be able to make that work. Um, and I also have thoughts about like drilling into the, the you know handles and pieces of existing things. Like that's also something that I feel like might be in my future with this. So I'm just going to I'll weight that a little towards the bottom just so it doesn't totally look like I'm making the logo for Target. Okay, so there's my template stuck to my template stuck to my wood with my rubber cement. I have this giant stack of boxes and trays of loose stones and we're just going to take a second to rearrange those so that my rotary tool doesn't flip them off because that would be terrible. I'd be picking up stones for forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, by the way, this is the template that I used for my eye. So literally just printed them off of the interwebs. Okay, so now I'm going to take my um, rotary tool and I'm going to load my little drill bit. I'm going to load that um, 1 16th inch drill bit in there. 
it doesn't really matter what size you use for your pilot holes. It just has to be smaller than your smallest stone. Okay, really? Um, it has to be smaller than your smallest stone. Otherwise, um, your stones are going to obviously drop inside of it. And of course, to load that gel bit, I need to switch to a smaller collet on my, oh dear, what in the, that would be bigger collet. Switch to a smaller collet on my rotary tool. So this is just a regular Dremel rotary tool with a flex shaft. Um, if you have an actual jeweler's flex shaft, that will of course also work swimmingly for this. Let me grab that collet off the floor before I forget about it. And you could probably even accomplish this with a like a regular drill, just a regular like you know Makita drill. It's just going to be really awkward because um, of course that drill is very large and this block of wood is very small. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to pop a pilot hole at every blue dot that I made except for the ones in this um, first circle that I decided I wasn't going to drill. So once again, we'll see if I remember that. Don't need to be very deep. Oh for goodness sake, nobody wants to become famous. I don't know if I have any mods on tonight, so hold on while I see if I can snatch that bot. Amy, I need to mod you. Yeah. I don't think so. Bot has been zapped. Now we go back to drilling holes. Okay, so I did manage one pilot hole, so I just, I just drilled right through the paper. So now I'm going to drill more of them. camera. I think I should get points on a Saturday night for remembering to only drill every other one. You don't have to go very deep with your pilot holes. You're just basically giving your setting burr a place to rest. Probably won't. So, like, it's going to fall down any minute. Go back over there where you belong, right? Trying to get it to shed a little bit more light on my drilling. There we go. That's mildly better. I decided to put one on every radio and one in between. Hopefully that was not a bad choice. So I have I have a thought. Alright, so 
so that is all of my pilot holes. Just peel off the template. And there you go. So now I'm going to grab some of my 320 grit sandpaper. It's the same sandpaper I use for metal. And I'm just going to give a quick sand to that surface just to make sure all that rubbing out, or not rubbing out, uh, rubber cement is gone. And then I'm just going to do a quick sand on the edges as well. Just to make sure everything is nice and nice and smooth and not going to stab anybody, knock that sawdust out. Okay. So there we go, there's all of my pilot holes. Now I'm gonna switch to my big setting burr, which is just gonna be my middle. So that means I need a wrench again and my four millimeter setting burr, which of course means I'm gonna have to change collets. This is one thing I really do not enjoy about the Dremels is that they don't have a universal or infinite size collet, you have to change bigger ones and smaller ones depending on what you're doing, which is kind of a pain in the butt. It's the thought that counts with the sawdust. That's fair. I think you should have a talk with your nose though about it really doesn't need to freak out for sawdust that's, I mean, what are we basically two whole countries away from each other? Okay, so that's my setting burr in my rotary tool. So I'm just going to burr out this center. Let's see if I can do it this way. Um, it's better to put it on a level surface, of course, so that you can see it, or so that you can make sure it stays level, but I'm going to do it this way. This is going to get a little loud, okay? You may want to turn me down um, while I'm doing this, because this is grinding, so it's going to be louder than the drilling. Um, as far as how deep do I want to burr this, um, just bear in mind the curvature of your stone that you're putting in there. Okay, you don't want it to just kind of, you know, drop in and get buried by the wood. So, oh my gosh. You do, however, want it to flip right side up. There, so to curve that stone, you don't want it to drop in and get buried in the wood. Oh, I know why that's doing that. Sorry, y'all. You don't want it to drop and get buried in the wood, so not too deep is the general rule of thumb. Alright, so again, this is going to get loud, so you may want to turn me down. I'm just going to take that setting burr and I'm just going to drop it into that hole. Look, smoke! And there we go. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to change to my three millimeter and that's what I'm going to be using for all of the rest of this. So you're not going to have to sit here watching me change setting burrs, you know, every five seconds for the entire broadcast. I promise this is the last one. But yeah, so had, am having tons of fun with this. Definitely want to do more of this. I want to work on um, using these as settings for some irregular cabochons and see how that works. I think that's going to be really fun. So yeah, stay tuned for more of this in the future. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to burr out all of these little dots, but I'm having thoughts that I may have put the dots on the outside too close together. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to do every other dot. And if I feel like I can't burr out that middle one, I'm just going to leave it as a decoration. It's a decorative dot, not a functional dot. Why not? All right, so. And this should go pretty fast because I don't want to bridge these very deep either. So bridge. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do all those dots, but that's okay. I'm actually not going to be able to do all those dots either. See, interesting things that happen. So that's okay. I'll do this one, and then we'll go from there. Alright, so there's that. So this dot is way too close. So we're going to go to this one. Every other dot. Here? 
So, could I have planned this better? Of course I could have, but, you know, see right now. Okay, so then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for this one and this one. So rather than doing kind of a concentric circle pattern now, I'm just, because if I do every other one, then that puts me... Okay, that's what I'm going to do every other one, but I'm not going to start here at the 12 o'clock because then that puts me with my next one here where I don't want it to be. I'm going to start with this one. So yeah, every second dot will work, but I can't start with the top one. Also, this is interesting because I'm just left-handed. <laughs> There we go. And also, Lori, thank you for that. Oy. Okay, so now I've got everything. All right, everything is burred out. Um, now I'm going to do, and this is where I totally lied to you, people. I'm so sorry. I am a dirty, rotten, stinking liar because I need to change to um, one more drill bit, which is my, my big drill bit, which I'm going to use to drill my hole. And that's the, that's the last change in the rotary tool. Now, for drilling the hole through the center, this is where if one were possessed of a drill press, which I am, but it, it doesn't work with this particular rotary tool, but if one were possessed of a drill press, this is where that tool would come in very handy because what a drill press does is it allows you to near just take your take your drill bit straight down with really out any worry of human error and um, when you're drilling a hole straight through something that's this thick that's a pretty important thing but like I said I don't have one that's currently functional so we're just gonna go for it human error style um, so I'm just gonna start right here and I'm gonna try my best to go straight down through this delicious. I guess it depends on what kind of error it is, Mary. I guess human error could be delicious. There we go. I didn't want to drill into my hello box. That's why I picked it up. Um, and yes, that's a good point is I could paint the dots that I don't use with um, the color. And that'd be fun. I could also go back with a smaller setting burr and put smaller stones in them. Um, I just don't want to take the time to go find all of those parts and pieces right now. Um, but the cool thing about this is that you don't, you know, you, you don't have to be done when you're done. Uh, all right, now I'm gonna just take a little bit of linseed oil just to kind of shine this up a bit. I am doing that before I do my stones because I don't want to have to clean linseed oil off of all of my stones. So I'm just going to, and you could use whatever, you know, wood finishing uh, medium you wanted, or you could use nothing. Um, you could use mineral oil, you could use, um, oh, when there's a word that's escaping me right now, but um, the clear varnishy stuff. Polyurethane. Thank you. I kept thinking polyester, and I'm like, that's not right. Polyester is not the answer here. Um, I will say if you use polyurethane, um, be careful. 
of your holes. Okay, you don't want to get polyurethane in your holes because it will completely clog them up. The linseed oil at least will um, absorb into the wood. Okay, so there's my there's my wood. A little bit prettified old English. Yep, absolutely. Liquid gold. Like any of those things are going to work. Even um, I mean, baby oil is mineral oil. You can even use olive oil, actually. So now I have couple of, and yeah, sorry, I didn't write anything on the whiteboard because I'm so freaking late. Um, all right, so now I have two-part epoxy, which is not going to show because holy cow, there we go, two-part epoxy. Ooh, wax is good too. Sharon's not wrong. So um, two-part epoxy is just literally, comes in two parts, a resin and a hardener. I put a little too much hardener on there, so I'm not going to use all of that. So I'm just going to scoop these together and I'm going to mix them. So this is the epoxy 330 that we use when we're doing repairs here at Beating Dreams. So the reason that I can take this and I can mix it up now is because this has a longer pot life than a five minute epoxy, which is like um, typically what you get at the craft store or the hardware store. Um, if you've got five minute epoxy, you can still do this project. You just need to do it um, in smaller increments because literally five minute epoxy is five minutes from mix to cure. This takes about 20 minutes to cure or to, to stiffen up to the point where you can't use it. So now I'm just going to take my, um, and we just use old knotting awls here at Beating Dreams for epoxy, and I'm going to put some epoxy in my center hole. And then I'm going to use this tool. This is um, a rhinestone uh, picking up tool and you can get these on Amazon, you can get them on Wish because um, they use them a lot in the uh, nail industry, uh, finger nails, not construction nails. Um, but what this will do for you, it's pretty cool. If you just put your stone down and touch it, the wax is just a little bit sticky. So it'll pick your stone up and then it'll let you just drop it straight down into your hole and push it in. However, here is where we run into the problem that four millimeters is not always four millimeters. Let's see if this one's small. Okay, so I'm having the problem of the fact that I used my four millimeter setting burr for these stones, but my stones are just a wee bit bigger than four millimeters. So that means it's time to improvise. Let's see. And so this takes us back to our, you know, what we were talking about on a previous tutorial, I don't quite remember when, about calibrated stones. Nope, I'm just not gonna go in there. Um, about calibrated stones. So calibrated stones means that you are literally paying four stones that are precisely cut to be exactly the millimeter size that they say that they are. And that may seem really weird that you have to pay extra for the stone to be the size that it says it is. But, okay, that one maybe goes in there, cool. But it's actually, it is really a thing because there is so, I may regret this. Um, anyway, because there's so much leeway between, you know, say 4 millimeters and 4.25 millimeters, um, you know, oh, also don't do that. Don't put your hand in the epoxy because it's gross. Um, but anyway, so there's so much leeway between 4 and say 4.25 that, you know, what they'll do is they'll just, you know, manufacture to that loose tolerance, which is fine, except for the fact that, you know, you just noticed I had to try 
four different stones to get, I know that was a yuck, um, four different stones to get one that would fit in here and I had to actually tap it in a little bit with a hammer, which I don't ever recommend doing on a stone, but I did finally get a lapis to fit in there. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our CZs. So I'm gonna do these um, one, you know, one section at a time, just because I don't want my epoxy to dry before I get my, my CZs in there. So I'm just going to do, um, I can probably do this whole inner circle all at once, but then on the outer ones, on the outer ones, I'm going to go in sections. Okay, so I've got epoxy in all of those. I'm going to grab my stone setting tool. And again, just touch that to your stone. The sticky wax will pick it up and then just drop it in the hole. And then um, it comes with this little pointy bit on the end and you can use that to just seat your stone in the hole. And something that I'm still kind of having trouble with is putting too much epoxy in my holes. Like you can see how it's just kind of spooching out there. Um, I don't love that. So that's something that I definitely plan to try to keep working on. Not on stream, obviously, because I've got a sale to do. See that one went in there really nicely. So yeah, you can literally just drop them in there. Um, almost like diamond painting only with wood instead of paper or cardboard or whatever surface they use for diamond painting. All right, I'm going to just grab some rubbing alcohol. God, I really wish that would focus in better. Oh, there we go. Just need to make it taller. So I'm just going to go in there with a little bit of rubbing alcohol real quick and see if I can get some of that epoxy off and I'm going to try and do better on my next round. Um, so denatured alcohol and rubbing alcohol are really good for cleaning off epoxy as long as it hasn't cured, which once again, mine's not going to be cured, it's not actually going to be cured, cured, cured for a while. Um, a solid probably um, five to six hours is the cure time on this, but it'll get too sticky to use in about 10 or 15 more minutes. But as long as it hasn't cured, 